six points is a big difference. It's a huge difference here. Let's bring in Crocker. Before we bring point, in Crocker, though. last year, this this has been, we bring this up all the time. Because Eric Crocker, Eric Crocker was the first to say this. It didn't like all of us here in the Bay Area. This is what Crocker said last September 25th. We're talking about the defense. Defense, defense, defense. Everybody was getting off Steve Wilkes. Steve Wilkes this, Steve Wilkes that. And Crocker said this. It's a 45-second clip, and we'll bring in Crocker right after it. Oh, let's pot, let's pot it up. Uh, pot up our soundboard, Cam. Get that soundboard up here. And here we go. I don't think he's doing anything different. I think he's doing the same thing they did and is listening to Kyle Shanahan. I think Kyle Shanahan is the real defensive coordinator. Here. Really? All right. I, I think Kyle's the co- defensive coordinator. Kyle brought in Wilkes and said, this is the defense I want you to run. I want you to run it like that. That's the same thing he did with Robert Sala. Like, he yeah. went, found Robert Sala because he knew that defense. He went after one guy, couldn't get him, then said, okay, let's get Robert Sala. Robert, this is the defense I want you to play. You know it. You understand it. Let's build a team around that. And then they have transitioned into more of a two high team over the years. Mm-hmm. But when they went and got Wilkes, it was with the thought of this is the type of defense I want you to run. If I'm not mistaken, you sit in on some of these meetings, gets guys to understand, hey, this is how I would attack it. This is what you should do, et cetera. I think he's kind of the key piece huh. in how well really? the defense has been. So let's bring in Eric Cocker, our good friend here from uh, Lockdown 49ers podcast. He's one of the best out there doing it, covering the 49ers, former NFL player, of course, playing the Arena League by way of the 209 in Stockton, California. Crocker, long time, no talk, man. Good to have you here on the morning roast, courtesy of the River Islands Guest Line. All guests on 95.7 The Game appear on the River Islands Guest Line. Is it the time for you to discover the islands, River Islands and Lathrop? We play that clip all the time, Crocky. All the time, because <laughs> as we're roasting Nick Sorensen, we keep going back to that Well, Actually... It's Shanahan's defense. So how do we fix the defense that Sorensen is running for Kyle Shanahan? <laughs> I think uh, if you ask Kyle Shanahan, Sorensen just needs to get on the same page as where <laughs> Shanahan is and how he sees it being ran. I mean, that was the thing, right? You know, think about last year and where some of the issues started to rise, arise defensively. I think it was Wilkes, like, struggling to be, in, be one, be in sync with how Kyle Shanahan wanted him to call plays. We saw it in the Super Bowl, right, where for better or for worse, Kyle Shanahan was like, no, I don't want to like that. He called a timeout and kind of switched up the defense in a key moment. Uh, I think that what we're seeing here is a coordinator or somebody who has kind of come up under the 49ers over the last couple of years still trying to get a grasp on exactly how to run it. And I'd say early in the season, too, you're still trying to figure out your personnel who are going to be the right guys. Heck, I coach high school football in Stockton. We're still figuring out who are going to be the right guys in this week four. That's not a great thing. But I think with the 49ers, you kind of bang this thing out early on. And over the next quarter of the, of the season, I would like to see, has it improved at all? I think all the coordinators have kind of gone through this at some point or another, uh, kind of a lull in the season, and they, they make their way out of it. Can Swanson do it? Do it? That's going to be a big question. Is the personnel good on defense? Uh, I think healthy it is, but right now you're dealing with a lot of kind of moving around, moving pieces. You have guys, you have guys sitting out, uh, missing practices. Uh, you know, Leonard Floyd was banged up for a little bit. You had Gross Models banged up for a little bit. You don't have Greenlaw out there, which you I really would love to have him on the field. Mm-hmm. Tell him who Funga is just now working his way back. Um, you know, Ward had to sit out some practice because of injuries. This team is really banged up on both sides of the ball. I think the heavy hitters on offense are overshadowing some of the guys that have been in and out of the lineup or in and out of practice for the defense. What are you seeing from Nick Bosa? Because everybody wants more from him. You know, I think Bosa, that, that's the standard, right? You know, we've been hearing a lot about uh, Brandon Ayuk and these drops that he's having. Once you start making money, it's like, nah, you, you got to be 1,000. Every time you step on the field, and I think for you know Nick Bosa, he does a good job. He's seeing a lot of attention, right? Like who else are they going to give attention to on that defensive line? You know, there's nobody to really take the heat off him. So we're going to double him. We're going to chip, uh, chip him. You know, we're going to make sure that he doesn't get into his pass rush without feeling multiple bodies being thrown at him. And he's working. You know, I think he still does a decent job of moving uh, quarterbacks off of their spots. We saw him get multiple sacks against the uh, uh, Minnesota Vikings. But it's it's just a hard job when you're the guy. And, and that yeah. is the standard. You you watch the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, watch how many pass rushes. Uh, um, uh, what's the kid's name? Michael, Michael Parsons. Parsons. Yeah. Watch how many pass rushes Michael Parsons gets without getting touched by multiple people. It doesn't happen. Mm. I mean, he's getting chipped. He's getting doubled. So you just 
when you're the guy like that, you just have to figure it out. No doubt. $34 million a year at $120 million guaranteed. And you're right about Ayuk. Every pass he gets thrown this year is going to be magnified. And if he drops it, oh, my Lord, it's going to be all hell's going to break loose. We're talking to Eric Crocker here on the River Islands guest line. So back to the defense here because you obviously play corner. And I don't think Tarvir Swartz should have played last week. He was obviously compromised, and the Rams knew that, and they attacked him relentlessly in the second half. How do you fix this defense with all the injuries? Is it a scheme thing? Should they blitz more? Hargrave is out now, Crocker. So now you don't got that pass rush specialist inside. I don't know how you fill that void. Do you blitz more? Do you become more aggressive? How do you fix this defense here in the early going? I think in a, in a, in a perfect world, most coordinators would tell you that they would love to rush four and play coverage. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's kind of the best way to do it. But if you can't get pre- uh, pressure with four, and you're not moving the quarterback off of the spot with four, and you have Nick Bosa getting double and triple teamed and everything they're doing with him, you, you are going to have to send some blitzes. Or you're going to have to send some things that look like a blitz, whether you, you know, send a linebacker, drop it in into coverage. Uh, you know, I saw uh, Nick Bosa do that last week. You might have to do more of that. Just give different looks. Or confuse them more on the back end. You know, you think about the 49ers against the Minnesota Vikings. But that was probably the most confused I've ever seen Brock Purdy. Yeah. And it wasn't that they had to blitz a ton, but as long as we mix up our looks and you don't know what you're seeing post-snap, that's going to make the quarterback a little bit more hesitant to pull the trigger. And if you're more hesitant, what does that mean? More time to get to the quarterback. So, uh, you know, 49ers, maybe there's some things defensively that they could change up their looks. But are they being a little too simplistic? You know, are they just lining up and playing in the defense, or our guys line up showing single high, rolling to a single two, uh, I mean, to a two high, you know, are the defense, the backs on the outside press bailing, you know, are the linebackers lining up like they're going to blitz and then they're dropping out, then another guy comes, are the things that they can do to confuse these uh, offenses a little bit and make them a little bit more hesitant to throw the ball. Because in the second half, especially the fourth quarter, Matthew Stafford was not hesitant with anything. He was on, he was dialed in. It was, he was playing in rhythm, and you do not want to let Matthew Stafford play in rhythm. Yeah, the amount of plays that they bunched people and then did a rub route or a pick route off of that. I mean, it was just wide open, making 2-2 go across, and they, they did a really good job of that. You brought up Brock Purdy. A year ago, if I asked the question to myself, the answer is clearly Kyle Shanahan. And I'm not running either guy out of town. I'm just asking in terms of importance because it feels like there's a shifting of the tide going on right now. Who's more important to the 49ers today and for the rest of this year moving forward, Kyle Shanahan or Brock Purdy? Well, it's, it's always going to be Kyle Shanahan because one thing that Brock Purdy does extremely well, he runs the hell out of this system. And every time we watch the 49ers get into like a sticky situation, I don't think it's because Brock just can't figure things out offensively. I think it's because of the simplicity of this play calling. It's very simple. It's, hey, we're going to run, we're going to do these things. And then their their run game, that's where they spend a lot of their time. That's where they make sure that it's, hey, we're going to give these different looks and we've got these different blocks and we're going to do it like this. And they are very creative in the run game. They are not as creative in the passing game and with the concepts. So once a team gets a read on what the 49ers do, I think it throws everything off. Like Brock Purdy knows this system inside and out. He knows exactly where to go with the ball post-snap. He plays in rhythm, like I said. I mean, this guy completes a very high completion uh, uh, percentage of his uh, passes that he attempts. Brock does an amazing job with that. And we just learned one thing as well. He can do it no matter who's out there. Yeah. It's kind of a little bit plug-and-play, whether it's Debo, whether it's IU, whether it's Juwan Jennings. Hey, we saw Richie James one time go for nine catches yeah. for 170 yards and, and a touchdown, right? Yep. Like, these guys, as long as the receiver knows where to be, Brock is going to know exactly how to find him and how to get him the ball. But once teams are like, wait, well, Kyle's doing this. Okay, you got this look, and they're on to that. I almost feel like Kyle Shanahan has no change-up to that. Mm. Like, Kyle, what's your change-up to the passing game? And it's almost like he doesn't prepare to be behind. He prepares that, hey, our system, our scheme is so sound that no matter who we're playing against, we should be good. We can run it. This is what they like to do. Boom, boom. But once they get a read on it, it gets him in a very tight, sticky situation. And I think it's on Kyle Shanahan to figure out how to adjust. Not the quarterback. I think Brock does exactly what he's supposed to do very well. Once they get a beat on what Kyle's doing, that's when the 49ers find themselves in a little trouble. And it doesn't happen all the time. 
We've seen it happen a couple of times now early on in this season. Yeah, we've seen it happen in big games as well. Eric Crocker here on the River Islands guest line. So as we ask the fans this other question too, because you, you're on X. And I'm sure you got your group chats with your friends and you're doing a podcast with bruh, with Peacock and you're talking to Niner fans left and right. And the Q rating for Shanahan is down right now. Like we go straight to Shanahan. He's such a polarizing figure. And I, we've been asking fans, what's your biggest issue with Shanahan? We don't think he should be fired. He's a hell of a coach. Like you said, his system works. He's won a lot of football games. But Croc, if I had to ask you, what is your biggest issue with Shanahan as a head coach? Is it that changeup or the lack of a changeup and lack of adjustment if he does get behind in the passing game? What's the biggest issue you have with Kyle Shanahan? Yeah, I think that there could be a little bit more creativity in the passing game. Now, I have kind of on X was going back and forth with JT O'Sullivan a little bit. And, you know, he's great understanding the X's and O's and the offensive side of things. And he says, hey, these office coordinators, they're going to spend a whole lot of time on this or on this. There are some teams that spend more time on having a more expansive passing game and more difficult concepts, and those teams maybe aren't as creative in the run game. Kyle Shanahan is the opposite. So the thing I want him to change, I don't think it will ever change. I think the 49ers just, regardless of whatever situation it is, they just have to figure out a way to make it work and kind of be a little bit more perfect. Don't have the drops uh, that they've had, right? Uh, we're talking about this right now, and if, Ron, if Ronnie Bell doesn't drop that ball late, yeah. We're not even winning that game. Mm-hmm. And we're not talking about Kyle Shanahan. We're not talking about – we're maybe talking still about the defense. Right. But we're not talking about Kyle and his ability or inability to fix things on the fly. So, uh, you know, it's part of it. The players have to take responsibility for it, making sure that they're executing. Uh, you know, I trust Brock is going to execute. Are the other guys around him going to make sure that they do their job? What about their special team issues? <laughs> I mean, the special team issues have been – just maddening uh, as a Niner fan. It, it feels like in all their big losses at any point outside of the Brock injury in Philadelphia a couple years back, it, like you can point to multiple special teams gaffes. Like, h- how do they get that fixed? You know, special teams, they're, they're coordinators too. I think everybody thinks about the offensive coordinator. Everybody thinks about the defensive coordinator. Special teams co- coordinator has just as much impact on that unit as the other guys have on theirs. So when you see some of these things happen, some of it I have to put on the players, right? All right, um, the, the kid out of Wake Forest, the safety, you coming down, you came down a little too tight, let the return to get outside of you. Yeah, I can coach you up on it, but in the moment, you got to make that play. You know, you got to make that play. And now the special teams coordinator looks bad because you guys give up a long punt return. I think the way to fix that, you either have this guy fix it and he doesn't have that issue again, uh, uh, Mustafa, or you pull them out and figure out somebody else who can do the job there. I'm pretty sure that was a big conversation uh, come this uh, Tuesday, uh, Monday when they went over the film. Uh, I think the special teams missed field goal. I don't know what the coordinator can do about that. Right. Like, Moody, you were six for six week one. You're, you're making your field goals, you know, week two, whatever you attempt, and then you miss it with the game on the line. Like, the coordinator can't do anything right. about that. Like, you got to make your field goal kick. But when we talk about the special teams unit, we're going to lump the coordinator into that missed field goal as if it's his fault. It's not his fault. It's Moody's fault. So you just have to make it and hold them accountable. And I think that's the one thing he can do. Now, we're seeing consistent big returns, 49ers, Gunners not getting down there. Uh, maybe they're, you know, they're not punting to the right side of the field. I'd say what I will put on him. Why did you kick it straight down the middle of the field when the the Rams had no timeouts left mm. with like under a minute left? Like now you want to put something on him that allowed the big return? It would be that because that's his call. We're going to go strong left. We're going to go strong right. That's on the special teams coordinator. He tells them where to punt, and they punted it right down the middle of the field. So I will put that on him, and I'm pretty sure Kyle Shanahan will hold him accountable for that decision as well. And if you see it happen again, you probably find – a new coordinator on the 49ers next next season. <laughs> Croc, last one for you here. We appreciate the time this morning. You're on fire right now. Christian McCaffrey just went over to Germany. Achilles to the night. Shasky and I, we saw the Achilles pop up on the injury report. We're like, uh-oh. Then he misses the Jets game. And I was led to believe, hey, if they get anything from McCaffrey this season, it's a bonus. I don't expect anything from him off that Achilles to the night. We know what Achilles injuries mean. How do you view this injury? You've been in the game. You've been around guys who've torn Achilles or whatnot. What is he dealing with right now? Uh, you know, the crazy thing is uh, Peacock and I on Locked on 49ers, we were talking about it prior to knowing that it was Achilles tendonitis. I'm actually dealing with Achilles tendonitis now. Now, I don't have around-the-clock 
uh, rehab, you know, like Christian McCaffrey is able to have. I'm not flying to Germany to get this, uh, you know, procedure done that, that he's getting done. I know another guy who did, uh, well, I don't know him personally, but RIT Kobe Bryant, the late great, mm -hmm. he went there to get that uh, treatment done on his knee. So clearly this is something that's going to help expedite this injury situation. I know for me, the Achilles tendonitis that I'm dealing with, again, I don't have around the clock uh, rehab going on and all these NFL trainers poking at me, but it, it hurts at different times. It hurts, uh, you know, Sometimes I'm fine. I can go run six miles right now. And for the first half of the mile, I feel it a little bit. And then for the next, you know, five and a half miles, I'm pretty good. Might be a little bit sore later on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but you try to make sure you stretch, try to make sure you do the right things. I know the doctor told me, Croc, the only way to fix this and heal this is to stay off of it. And I said, stay off of it? Like, man, I coach high school football. Right. I'm trying to run this little uh, Golden Gate Bridge marathon thing. <laughs> like, there's no way I can stay off of this this Achilles. But that's the only way for me to heal it. I think for Christian McCaffrey, they probably told him the same thing. You got to stay off of it or you're going to end up in the boot. You got to let it heal. And he's like, nah, I got to figure something else out. Let me fly to Germany and see if they can help. So it doesn't sound good. Anytime you're dealing with something that's an Achilles injury, it always leads to something else. We've seen in the Bay Area, right, yeah. Kevin Durant. Yep. He was having calf issues. And the next thing you know, boom, we're watching the finals, and that thing ruptures, right? Did he come back too soon? Did somebody tell him to stay off of it, and it wouldn't happen? I think Christian McCaffrey's probably having those same conversations. Croc. Always good to have you on, man. You're always spitting wisdom. Our audience loves you, man. Keep up the great work. Where, where are you coaching in Stockton again? You're not at St. Mary's, are you? No, I'm not at St. Mary's, oh. man. They're the, uh, they're the evil cousins over oh. there. Right. Uh, I'm at Edison High School. Okay, all right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna brag about the De La Salle win, but you're good. You're good in the hood, man. You're good in the hood. I, I uh, think they lost the De La Salle. Yeah, they did they lost last like week. Three. Yeah, yeah. Last okay, week, yeah. last Friday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were coaching over there, but no, nah, you're doing a great job, man. Lockdown 49ers podcast with Brian Peacock. You guys do a great job, man. Croc, always, always thank you for the time, brother. Good stuff. All right, thanks. Hey, go Lakers. Y'all see the shirt? Yeah, nah, I was going to comment on that. We, we were going to blur that out when we post this video <laughs> later, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> right, right, take a hike with that Lakers shirt.